Now, hydrofracking is a very big uh, subject in the United States right now, especially here in New York State. And recently, 60 Minutes did a segment on it, which was extremely balanced and kind of left you to decide whether you were for it or against it. But it seems here uh, in New York State, more people, at least those that are vocal, seem to be opposed to it than are for it. But at the same time, you hear how great it would be to uh, our local economy and the New York State's economy in general. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, the, 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 the hydrofracking itself is not new. It's been done in this country since 1900s. Uh, millions of, a million wells have been fracked uh, across the country. Uh, we've hydrofracked wells in New York since the 60s. So the hydrofracking itself is not new. What is new is that in the last 10 or 15 years, companies, um, the high-tech oil and gas companies, and they are high-tech, are able to drill horizontal wells and frack long laterals. In other words, laterals that may be up to a mile in length or even, even beyond that, even two miles in length. And uh, in doing so, they're using much more water, millions of gallons of water, instead of the 80,000 gallons that we used before for a small well. And so all of these issues kind of got uh, um, mixed together, I guess. And, and, but, but the fact of the matter is that there's nothing new in the hydrofracking technology except for more water and except for kind of a bigger scale of operations. What exactly does it mean? You use the term frack. What exactly does it mean to frack? Well, what, hap what happens is they, they send down a million gallons of, you've got a very tight shale, mm -hmm. and they send down a million gallons of fresh water with 1% to even a half percent chemicals and sand. And what happens is that, that that water is under pressure and it cracks the formation. And that's where the gas flows mm -hmm. back to the well bore. The, the sand is called the propin, and that propin goes into those tiny fissures, keeps those, keeps those um, um, cracks open so that the gas can flow back into the well bore and up, and up at the surface. Uh, so that's, basic, that's basically all there is. Why do they uh, use water than, say, the traditional way of, like they do with oil wells, just you know, drill down to get access to the natural gas? Well, you, you, need, you need to, um, the, the, the gas won't flow by itself. In other words, it won't flow naturally. It needs to be, it's, it's tight okay. in that formation, so it needs to be cracked and released. Okay, so that's the reason it wouldn't make sense to drill. Correct. Why is this process so important? Well, production and, f production of natural gas, for, first of all, the technology is, is relatively new, as I said, and shale development across the country is, is taking hold. Um, the Marcellus, which is in our backyard, uh, is purported to be the second largest gas deposit in the world. So this is a tremendous, tremendous resource for us. That runs from Ohio to uh, southern and eastern New York State? Ohio to all the way down to West Virginia and uh, through Pennsylvania, of course, and up in our neck of the woods. Um, if you wanted to place a deposit in the country, this is the, the perfect location. It's close to the markets, close to the population centers of the country. Um, it would take very few pipelines since we already have a pipeline infrastructure. It's in depressed areas of the state. So both in Pennsylvania and New York, our landowners who nobody seems to care about can, can reap the benefits of having wells on their property and, and receive royalties. And in the longer term, the state would have <clears throat> a 50, 100, 150 year supply of natural gas, domestically produced natural gas, which is so much more important to us than paying for someone paying for someone's oil across the country. And upstate New York would have water and natural gas, which means to me that there would be investment back, hopefully in manufacturing back to upstate New York. Now why do you think Natural gas is much more important than solar energy, wind energy, or uh, oil or energy. If, if, you, if you think about a spectrum of energy choices, mm -hmm. <clears throat> on the left is oil. 
And, and the reason for that is because it's, we don't control the price. We have uh, national security reasons. Um, and it's, a, it's dirtier. In the middle, we have coal, which we do produce domestically, and nuclear, which have their own environmental consequences. On the right, uh, we have wind, solar, and natural gas. I don't see them as competing. I see them as complementary. Natural gas is a clean burning uh, fuel. It, uh, if it were used for power plant and electrical generation, we would then back out all the coal that's being used. Um, I don't think that uh, in our lifetime we'll ever see the city of New York powered by solar, solar and uh, wind. Uh, and uh, certainly in an interruptible, uninterruptible supply. So natural gas is not only clean, it's in our backyard, it's domestically produced. The dollars that would, we'd be paying somebody to produce oil, oil abroad would stay here and stay in our, literally in our backyard. Now there seems to be an agenda in this nation, <clears throat> like we do have our own oil. Uh, Governor Palin wanted uh, an oil pipeline from Alaska down to, your, to the uh, main part of the United States and people continually seem to be opposed to uh, making us self-sufficient no matter what the energy is. What is the real agenda? Is it, is it really environmentally safe or unsafe or is there something else going on? I, I, I don't know. I, it seems as if people want to want nothing. They don't seem to want to take responsibility for an energy choice. <clears throat> no energy choice is risk-free. Right. But uh, it's much, you know, it, people don't want the pipeline, people don't want the Canadian pipeline, the XL pipeline coming down from Canada. Um, people don't want hydrofracking. Wh where are we going to get our energy from? There's and, a big endeavor right now to close Indian Point down by New York City. Well, that's another, that's another part of the equation. I mean, if we do that, then what are our alternatives here? We need to take responsibility for our energy choices, and, and that means, um, you know, this not in my backyard kind of stuff. I mean, that, that really has to stop both on the local level, on the state level, and at the national level. Now, there appears to be a concern. Uh, we were talking about the Sierra Club before going on the air today, on the part of the Sierra Club locally, and we were talking about Wardstone, that <coughs> um, this could put our water supplies in New York State in a precarious uh, position. Your thoughts on that? Well, th there's a, a few distinctions to be made. First of all, uh, back to my old job. Okay. In the, in, in the 1980s, we developed a, 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 a set of casing and cementing conditions that are on every single well. Okay, what for our viewers that don't know, what exactly is casing and what is cementing? Okay, when you drill a well, when you drill a natural gas well or an oil, any well, you need to use pipe. And in our case, we had, we required two strings of pipe, in other words, and, and two sheets of cement to protect the fresh water from, so you have fresh water, cement, pipe, cement, pipe, well bore. That's what we have. Um, we've had these conditions in place since the 1980s. We've drilled 10,000 wells in the state since the 1980s with virtually no problems, no impact on the groundwater. The problems that have occurred in Pennsylvania have largely come as a result of poor cement casing and cementing practices. They have just, they, Pennsylvania, have just adopted essentially what we've had in place for 30 years in December of 2010. So it's no wonder that they had uh, a number of problems with the drilling of wells back in the, uh, you know, back through this Marcellus period. Uh, so we, we, you know, we, we need to distinguish that New York has kind of always done it right and will continue to do it right. And it's almost insulting to me to say that we would somehow sacrifice the groundwater of the state of New York for uh, the drilling of oil and gas wells. It just would never happen. What particular... Uh water supplies are those who are opposed to uh, hydrofracking uh, specifically worry about or concerned about? Well, the, 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 the concern started out with uh, somehow, <coughs> excuse me, the fracking fluids that are in this lateral well bore going up 5,000 feet and reaching the fresh water. Well, that, that can't happen. It can't happen because of, uh, uh, it's against gravity, basically. 
So that was the first concern. The second concern, and, and the concern that they really should, have, should focus on, is the casing and cementing. The only way that the, any chemicals can get into the fresh water is through the well bore. And if that well is cased and cemented properly, then it will not happen. So uh, that became a concern. Then once those two things were resolved, now the question is surface impact. And in New York State, at least in the, in the current plan, all frac fluids will go to tanks. So they will not hit the ground. They will always be in tanks. Any, any flowback will come back to the tank and be taken off site. The only open pits would be for drilling fluids, basically some water, maybe some uh, oil-based drilling muds in, in, a, in a pit that would need to be lined and need to be taken off site and disposed of properly. Through a, through a, a very highly regulated system. Now, what areas of New York State should hydrofracking come to be would uh, benefit economically? Now, I know uh, Binghamton, Endicott, and Johnson City, right near the uh, Pennsylvania border, and obviously in the Marcellus Shell area. Yeah, what, what municipalities would benefit from that? Well, I, I would I would say it's pretty much the counties from Steuben to the east, all the way perhaps to Sullivan County. Okay. To at least Delaware, um, that would be for the Marcellus. Now, deeper is the Utica Shale, which could which uh, extends much more uh, to the north. So, and and there are some suggestions that the Utica is prolific, at least in Ohio, uh, so that. Uh, um, there may be the opportunity to develop that as well. Now, what regulatory safeguards are in place here in uh, New York State, or are they yet in place because hydrofracking <clears throat> hasn't started? Well, we already have. We, we could drill wells today under our present regulatory system. We have a very good, robust regulatory system, as good as anyone in the country. What they've done through the SGIS, the Supplemental Generic Environmental Impact Statement, is uh, basically enhance that regulatory program. So <clears throat> there are uh, additional safeguards being placed like a, a third string of pipe where I talked about two strings, mm -hmm. two redundant strings before. Now there'll be a third string of pipe. There'll be a, a slew of plans that'll be necessary to get a permit. In fact, if you ask me, it's way overkill uh, in, the, in the present uh, plan. But um, the fact of the matter is that uh, um, it will be the most extensive regulatory program in the nation, by far. Do you anticipate before uh, hydrofracking uh, starts in New York State that there will have to be additional safeguards uh, in place legislatively that the New York State Legislature will have to deal with? I, I don't really think there's a need for any legislation. We, we already have <clears throat> systems for the movement of waste, the movement of uh, tracking of waste. We have uh, we have a great deal of legislative authority and regulatory authority in, in pretty much all the areas, <clears throat> including, uh, I'd say to you, in the, in the enforcement side. Um, there are many, many tools that we have used uh, to make sure that people uh, stay in line. Besides serving uh, the residents of New York State with uh, natural gas, I understand when hydrofracking does happen, and I think it's inevitable that it will, will we will become one of the biggest energy exporters in the United States of America. Is that true? I'm not sure that's ever going to be true in New York because I'm not sure if the companies are going to be drilling here, to be honest with you. We're in competition with Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and if our system is too difficult or too expensive, they're going to go elsewhere. We produce maybe 4% of our natural gas needs now, so we would need to produce 94, 96% to to be even, and that's why I say we need to take responsibility for our energy, our energy choices. Pennsylvania, on the other hand, is a net exporter of gas already, and by the way, we've seen decreases in 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 uh, utility bills already from Marcellus. You've seen it here, both here in National National Grid. You've seen it in uh, National Fuel Gas out around Buffalo. New York State Electric and Gas, too? I, I don't know that for a fact, but okay. I'm, I'm sure that's true. Uh, so you're seeing lower, much lower energy, much lower natural gas prices, which are being reflected in our utility bills. 